Welcome back to Haley Motorsport. Today we're back checking the car out before we go racing to make sure we're good to go for daylighting and, and ready to run. Today we're going to check the engine, um, the fuel system and also the electrical system just to make sure we're all up to scratch and ready to go. First things first, uh, when it comes to engine stuff you need a, a restraint on your muffler. Um, I've just made this little loop up, it's just a piece of pipe uh, bolted with a little tag to the bottom of the exhaust pipe. Um, you can use anything, God, a lot of, most guys will use a couple of links of chain wrapped around and bolted. You, I've seen tags that you know weld on the muffler with a hose clamp around them. Just something to restrain your muffler so it doesn't end up in the cockpit of someone else's car if it happens to snap off or in an accident. Now to the engine bay. A couple of things not really safety related but needs to be done before you race. When you turn up with a new car or, or mainly an engine that hasn't been raced before, it's going to need to get what they call whistle tested um, to get sealed. Now all I do is you check your compression and make sure that it's uh, it's within spec of what the rules say. Now they use a special machine to do that, but I haven't got one of those machines, otherwise I'd show you how they do that. I might even see if I can convince someone to let me film their car getting done at one of the practice days or something coming up. But to get that done and get the seals fitted, you need a couple of holes in your inlet manifold drill. You can see this is my seal here that I've, when I've got the engine seal, the AWSR seal. Uh, I need a couple of holes drilled in your inlet manifold. Make sure they're drilled and ready to go. So when they do come along and seal it, they can just uh, run the wires through and seal it. You also need, and there's one there and one down the back there, so you can seal your rock covers, uh, two each side, uh, corresponding bolts each side, from the inlet manifold to the rock cover. That's so uh, when you win an Australian title, they can seal your engine so you can get pulled down at a later date and get inspected. Uh, you need to have that done as well. They will check that at daylighting. You won't get pinged for it, but they will tell you to, uh, to go and drill those bolts. They'll also, when they're uh, sealing up your engine, they'll also do a check on your ECU to make sure that your rev limit's at 6,000 revs, uh, which we, you know, we're limited to. Um, and they'll put that sticker on it, that sealing sticker on it. Um, I've actually got another ECU that I probably should get sealed, so I might even get that tested. They just plug a box into it. It's a pretty straightforward procedure, but they will uh, seal your, they do need to seal your ECU as well. I know the feel about that. Come down here with the light. Nearly forgot, you'll also need a couple of bolts uh, drilled on the timing cover. I've actually got a bit of tie wire through there, so I don't forget which bolts they are. Um, but yeah, you'll need a couple drilled on the front of the timing cover just so they can seal that as well. If you happen to win an Australian title, that'd be really, really nice. Right, we'll step into the fuel system now. A couple of checks you need to do on the fuel system. One of the main ones that still comes through, and I don't know why people never ran them, but you never used, it was never in the rules to run the clips on the injectors. If I put one of these clips off, actually, so you can see it. Yeah. Piss stick is screwed on through my finger here in a minute because it's not really the appropriate screwdriver for the job. Oh, that's going to be a pain in the butt to get back on later. You need to run the clips on your injectors. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't, and it wasn't in the rule book, and a lot of guys used to just run them free, sitting in there like that. But yeah, it's in the rule book. You need to run the clips on your injectors so they don't leak and it doesn't cause any hassles down the track. Um, these are pretty hard to come by at the track if you ever get. <laughs> if you don't actually have them on there. So yeah, please, whatever you do, just double check and make sure those clips are on your injectors. While we're talking about fuel systems, another thing you need to do, and I've been guilty of this myself, I forgot about it a couple of seasons ago, is make sure your fuel tap is clearly marked uh, with your off and on sticker. I've done it, I've forgotten about it at times. So yeah, just make sure, double check that, something else that you need to check to make sure that it's right. Make sure your fuel tap's clearly marked. All right, the last thing we're gonna check out is the electrical system in the engine bay. There is a couple of things you need to be aware of when it comes to the electrical system. Number one, you want your battery securely mounted. Mine's down here on the engine mount. A lot of guys will mount them on a tray in the, uh, just in behind the radiator, or even under the seat. There's a lot of guys that mount them in under here on a, a removable tray. All of those options are fine, but it needs to be in there secure. It needs to have the terminals covered with the rubber boots. Um, while we're talking about rubber boots, you also need to have one on the back of the alternator up here and funnily enough, there we go, I'll fail, mine's missing. Uh, I've actually put a new wiring loom in this car to fix it. I had some problems with it at the end of last season, so I put a new wiring loom in the car, I didn't get a boot for that and I've obviously still forgotten about it, I better get one of them organised. So with those little rubber boots on the battery terminals in the back of the alternator, I get a lot of people uh, telling me they can't find them, they're, they're impossible to find. 
They're not really. There's a part number. If you ring up Repco, they're going to tell you, oh, no, we don't know what you're talking about. I'll give you the part number for them. I'll, I'll write it across the bottom of the screen here. Uh, just go into Repco, give them that part number and there you'll get them. They're about, I think they come in a pack of two, red and black, and they're not very dear. Uh, just go and buy a couple. Obviously, you need one for there. You also need them on your, on your battery. Well, we're talking about the one on the back of your alternator. You also need to insulate your fuel line. Um, I've just got a bit of conduit. A lot of guys use a little bit of fuel hose, a bit of uh, heat trick, whatever works. Um, but yeah, you need to insulate the back of that. Mainly so when a car ends up on top of you, and it does happen. I've had three cars in the last two seasons end up on top of my car. Um, if they smash that alternator off, it'll short out in the back of the uh, fuel rail. It'll melt a hole in that aluminium fuel rail in about two seconds, and then you'll have a pretty good barbecue. And you don't really want to, you want to avoid that if you can. That's all for today. A uh, few simple checks. Make sure your car's right to run. Um, as always, if you've got any inquiries, please message the Victorian Wingless Sprints Facebook page. I'll put all those links in the description down at the bottom so you're good to go. And that's it. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you've got any queries, any queries at all, ask in the comments down below and I'll see what I can uh, come up with or an answer for you, whether I, can, I know it or I've got to go and ask someone else, I'll find you one. We'll see you all next time.